All right, a pleasant good afternoon to you and yours, and welcome to the Brevard Sports Network. Alan Slaughterzinski and Caleb Brown with you here at James Alex Goins Field, where the Rockledge Raiders 14U team will do battle today against a team out of Clewiston known as the Harlem Wolves. The conditions on the field, sloppy, field's in good shape. Uh, but it is raining at the moment. Today's broadcast is brought to you by 7v7 Elite. Check them out online at 7v7 Elite.com. It may be the off season, but it's never too early to either get pumped for 7-on-7 seven seven or to find out more information about it if you've never played it. But we get set to go here. Your coach is Mel Mitchell is the coach for the 14. You, the assistant coaches. David Love, Tony Brown, Victor, uh, Victory Brown, Marcus Fielder, David McMillan, and Brittany McDowell. Hopefully I brought my glasses. Maybe they're on top of my head. Then there they are. And your captains for Rockledge take the field. They are number four, Elijah Floyd. And number 33, Xavius Hawkins. A young man, a lot of these names you're familiar with, 14U. A lot of these young men in school already. As the rain comes down a little bit harder, I would imagine it's going to pass. It's Florida, doesn't it always? Great night of high school, well, I wouldn't say a great night. I'd say it was a night of high school football action. Great night for some teams, not a great night for others. And again, here at Rockledge, we don't have an elevated position, so we are on the field as the coin toss is taking shape here. Rockledge today, the program, undefeated. 6, 8, 10, and 12 all winners. None of them close except for the first game of the day, which went to overtime. Take a look down the sidelines there. It's big number 52 right there. That's Joseph Sonnenberg out of Jefferson Middle School. Somebody is uh, chomping at the bit to get that young man on their offensive line. I would be. You see the rain coming down here. As Harlem gets set to take the field. The Harlem Wolves and the Rockledge Raiders coming up. Rockledge wins the toss. They will receive. And we are set to go here. Show the Harlem. Cheerleaders ready to go. They came in dancing, didn't they, Caleb? Yeah, they did. And the rain's already letting up, which is a good sign. You never want to see football played in sloppy conditions. There's Georgina Corbin out there taking pictures. I know she was a happy woman last week. Was she not? As Jay Sean Corbin gets into the end zone for the first time in his National Football League career. The first of what we all know will be many touchdowns for Jay Sean. Congratulations, Jay. First team, he sure did. Good, how about you? Oh man, wouldn't miss this. Wanted to be here earlier today, but we you know, we ain't done almost six o'clock this morning. It's crazy, man, when the weather delays. I made a commitment to myself this year that I would sleep a little. <laughs> yeah. yeah it'll, it'll, it'll knock me down. <laughs> Now, yep. There's no argument there. <laughs> now, for those watching from Harlem, I don't have a roster for them, but uh, I can see the numbers, which is outstanding because I don't know what it is with these high school teams this year. They just think you can read anything through the lights on Friday night. We'll talk about some of the high school games. Rockledge wins today, 37-38 to nothing. I've heard two different scores. They beat Gulliver Prep now. 
Look, Gulliver Prep's a team that went to the regional finals last year. That's a team expected to win eight, nine, ten games again this year. And Rockledge handed it to him quite nicely today. Yeah, Ty Tyrone Jiskaman, defensive coordinator for the Raiders, again this year, just, you know, Coach Wayne Younger in that offense. A lot of things going to go right for that program this year. What I mean by that is deep into the month of December for them this year, I believe. As Harlem gets set to kick here, 10 minutes are on the clock, and we are about ready to go. And as soon as I open my mouth on the rain, it picks up. And the one thing we're missing that's pretty important is a football. Here it comes. That odd oblong shaped ball that is required to score. Can't see who's back deep, but we'll let you know here in just a second. Number 22 set to kick off for Harlem. Kick it off from the 40. Zoom in just a little bit, bud. There you go. And we are ready to go. And that is a kick. Ball's on the ground, picked up. Look at this. And they're hitting already. You can hear the pads clanking from here. Good, good return there off uh, what was just only could be described as an awkward kick. That's a tough ball to field. But you got to pick it up. Otherwise, they recover. It's their ball. So we get set to go here. You're going to have to go up a little more. Too much field. There you go. Yep. Down just a tad. Right there. The haze you see is the rain coming down, so apologies for that. That ball is nearly picked off, and that Harlem defense showing out already. It's Hawkins' pass is incomplete. Threw in the quadruple coverage there. This is going to be a game of big plays, so... People are going to have to, you know, you're going to have to watch that. You're going to see big plays broken here for long gains. And can't really see. It looks like three backs in the backfield here. It looks like that option offense. And there it is. And, and my goodness gracious, Harlem swallows that hole. And it's third and ten for this Raiders. Offense, Harlem comes in and just, uh, well, let's say just stopped it. Nine minutes to go, one minute down already here in the first quarter, just underway in the 7v7 Elite Youth Football Game of the Week here on Brevard Sports Network. Turns, gives, and that's going to be fourth down in about eight. Nine at the most. Nope, they push him back. It'll be actually losing a yard, so it'll be fourth and 11. And the Rockledge offense right out of the gate picks up no yards, and they're going to be forced to punt as the rains come down. little back for me on this right here. Yep, no, the umbrella. All right. Number two is back deep for... Harlem, number two to punt is Zaylin Chapel at a Jefferson Middle School. He's back pretty far. And actually, he's going to come off the field, and looks like number 22 is set to punt. Darius Phillips whistle, and I believe they took way too much time there. So we'll do that again. It'll back him up five yards, so it'll be fourth and 14. Fourth and 14. Actually, they called that on. Wow, okay. I guess they called offsides there. So it'll be fourth. 
Does this change? Rockley's going to go for it now. So it's fourth and four now. And we got a timeout on the field. And I think there is some confusion as to what the Raiders want to do here. And they are forced to burn a timeout on fourth and four. So as they take a timeout, we'll hit the mute button. And we'll be right back with 7.48 to go. All right, welcome back here to James Allen Goins Field. New scoreboard, new goalpost, turf is in great shape, place looks great. League President Shatina Brown and her board have done a terrific job here. Fourth and a short four, and Rockledge is going for it. Give is, and they will be short. I tell you what, right now, the Raiders are going to need to find a way to throw the football. Thomas Nash, the third. Out of McNair Middle School on the carry, and he'll be stuffed, and it'll be a turnover on downs, and it'll be first and 10 for the Wolves on the Rockledge 48 yard line. If there's anything you can expect from a team out of Clewiston, it's that they're going to have closing speed. Oh, yeah, they're going to have quick closing speed. That's right, Kill. It makes a very good point if you didn't hear him. Those teams out of Clewiston, they, they've got some, some speed. Speed and more speed. And the offensive line looks pretty big, too. And they're right out of the gate. They're going to spread them out. Quarterback, I believe, is number nine. You got four wide receivers. And they're going to throw the football. They make no bones about it. That's a beaut. And that's – I tell you what, uh, Rockley's better be prepared to play some uh, defense in that secondary today. That young man's got quite a gun on him. That was a beautifully thrown football off the mark, but the ball in and of itself, a perfect spiral with fantastic trajectory coming out of his hands. And I think that this, this is the offense. They are just going to spread them out here. One back in the backfield is number three. And this time the give is to the back. There's a big hole there. He cuts it back as he'll pick up four. The hole was huge, but closed quickly. And number 14 has got to come off the field. He lost his helmet. That's Jaden Williams out of McNair Middle. Uh, at any level, you've got to leave the playing surface when your helmet comes off for one play. And he will do that as Zalen Chapel checks in. So he only picked up three. So as I said, that hole closed fast. Third and seven. Third and eight here, and I, I would imagine this is four-down territory with the way the defense played on the first series. No backs in the backfield. Quarterback steps up. He's going to keep it himself, and he's going to be absolutely drilled before he can even make the cutback. On that stop there, I believe, was Jamal Smith. I look like number 10. It was either 10 or 4. Elijah Floyd, so it's fourth and seven, an easy seven now. He did pick up a yard. Number eight's in the backfield with the quarterback. There are five wide receivers and one back in the backfield. I was going to say, they got, how many guys they got on the field? Okay, he's off the field now. I'm like, they got five wide receivers. They can't have a back in the backfield. Ball's out. Quarterback rolls to his left, looks to throw. He's going to be buried, and that's just great. East-West coverage by Xavion Peoples out of Florida Virtual School. Peoples shuts the corner down, and we've had two three and outs as the Rockledge offense will take over. Five fifty-three to go in the opening quarter. No score. Rockledge actually picks up. Two yards. They get the ball now on the Harlem side of the football field. First and 10 at the Harlem 49. Rockledge and Harlem here. This is going to be a slobber knocker. Yes, I use the old man term, slobber knocker. James Ross. Quarterback under center turns, gives. There's a nice hole. 
And there's a good gain on first down, and that's what you want. Nice chunk of yards there by Peoples. The defensive coach for Harlem chanting, we cannot miss that no more. Second and two, a gain of eight back under center. This time, a sloppy play there by the Raiders results in a loss. Kendo Waters falls to the ground, and it's a loss of three. So it'll be third and five now for Rockledge. Again, four down territory, no doubt. Five minutes to play on the dot. First quarter, no score here. As you see on the 7v7 Elite scoreboard, I want to thank Lee Latner for his sponsorship once again this year of youth football and our pregame show on Friday nights. Third and four, wishbone formation. That's offsides, first and ten for the Raiders coming up. Offensive line stayed put that time as Harlem did not. The second offsides penalty of the game is a costly one for the Wolves as they will now, Raiders will now have a first down off a penalty, so it'll be first and 10 for Rockledge at the, I'll call it the 38-yard line, 39-yard line. Wishbone formation, turns, gives to the deep back, deep left back, and he will grind his way for yards. I believe that's Xavier Peoples or Noah Connor. It's 18 or 19. I think it's 18. Yeah, it's 18. All right, second down and one, one and a half, right here in your living room. Whistles, false start coming. The Raiders will back it up five. So two steps up the ladder, two steps down it right now. I'm all right. Don't worry about me. Just Hawkins, quarterback under center. Tony Brown giving Hawkins advice here. So it'll be second down and about seven here for the 14U team. Wishbone formation again. Hawkins rolls to his right, throws, coming right at you. Caught, intercepted right here in your living room. Great coverage by number two. The intended receiver there is was a Mario Kendo Waters. And Harlem will take over first and ten. That, that, I, that was just great coverage. Nice job by Kale up there to get that. Luckily, that uh, didn't come two more yards down the field because I am no longer fast enough to get out of the way quickly. <laughs> so Harlem takes over first and 10 at the 25-yard line. Future Raiders and Tigers out here on the field. Rockledge with a big win today, 37 to nothing over Gulliver Prep. Oh my goodness, I don't know how he got that handoff off. I'll tell you what, great job there. Great penetration by Jaden Williams. Jaden Williams nearly took the handoff for Rockledge on that one. He broke through there and nearly picked that ball out of the quarterback's hand before the quarterback handed it off. Up front there, you see number six, that's De, uh, Dejon Blackman. And number 24 in your screen as well, Zion Lavore. Second and 11. Shotgun formation, quarterback throws, overthrows. So it'll be third and 11. 2.31 to go in the first. No score between... Harlem and Rockledge. Harlem out of Clewiston. 
The Wolves in black with the purple trim, moving from right to left on your handheld device. Rockledge in white with the Columbia blue pants and the rock written on them in white. And they are moving currently offensively from left to right on your handheld device when they have the ball. Third and 11 now. Quarterback moves his back to the left. There are four wide receivers in the formation. Split each side, nearly a false start here. Wasn't called. Steps up, throws. He just lifts one in the air. This is picked off. And a nice job by Darius Phillips, the Coco product. The Coco junior, senior high student picks it off, and the Raiders will get the ball right back unless he dropped it. Did he drop it? He does. But a good, good job, good effort there. That'll bring up fourth and 11. Thought he had it. 2.18 to go. Yeah, no doubt. Timeout, Harlem. So we'll step aside as well. 2.18 to play first quarter, no score. Right, somebody wanted to know if this was Mel Mitchell's team. Yes, indeed it is. Uh, the rest of the coaches, David Love, Tony Brown, Victory Brown, Marcus Fielder, David McMillan, and Brittany McDowell. David Love pulling double duty tonight. He's uh, the offensive line coach for... Uh, Rockledge today, yep. David Love, yep, pulling double duty. Of course, he's got a stake in this as well as Tory Love plays for Rockledge. Joseph Love plays for the younger team. Was it 12U? 12U, yeah. The Love family, staple in the Rockledge community. A couple of years ago, their brother was our offensive lineman of the year. And I think Rockledge has got the leading candidate for our offensive lineman of the year this year, and Bryce Lovett. And that is a punt, I think. Oh, he touched it. And luckily, Rockledge recovers that. You got to yell Peter on that and get away. Peter, 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 get away from the ball. Especially the backspin on that ball, that ball would have been rolling where you were trying to go. Yeah. So 2.08 to go, but Rockledge takes over deep now in Harlem territory. So Rockledge, it's addition by subtraction is what this is in terms of field position. Uh, not doing much offensively, but the defense holding their own and each and every time gaining yards for the offense when they take over. That's all you can ask your defense to do with the occasional turnover. And today, that Columbia blue and red certainly doing that defensively here as Hawkins comes back out and it'll be the wishbone formation. It takes me back to the Tom Osborne, Nebraska days. Turns, gives, good solid run, put his head down. And that should be 15 more, but it won't be. Zalen Chapel on the carry. Good run, good hard run. Second down and three now. Now the Raiders can't shoot themselves in the foot. They got to stay put up front, good clean snap, and maybe take that same run to the other side. Certainly got the size up front. Again to Chapel, and this time he's going to have a first down or close to it. As pushing and shoving goes on. And we got an injured Raider on the field. We don't show injuries. Zealand Chapel down. Hopefully just a cramp. Let's run a commercial. We'll be right back. Hello, Space Coast. Alan Slaughterzinski for the Brevard Sports Network. I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank all of you for your support of BSN and allowing us to cover your student athletes and come into your home each and every night. Give us a follow on Facebook at Brevard Sports Network, and here's the many more years of top-notch sports coverage right here in Brevard County. Thanks again. All right, Zalen's off under his own power after picking up a first down. Just a cramp. So, 
just for a second. I want to just get this right for you. Right there. Uh huh. All right, so first and ten at about the 22 yard line. Rockledge with their deepest penetration of the day. Getting set to enter the 7v7 elite red zone. Hawkins under center right here. Straight up the gut goes Okenda Waters. And he'll be stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Second and about nine for Rockledge. Or check that. He actually picked up two yards. So second and eight for Rockledge. Here on the dead on the 20. That's the red zone officially. So the Raiders have... Entered the red zone. And that's offsides. Got him again. Got him again there. So it is. That's going to. Oh, they're walking it back the other way. Yeah, it's five the other way. And believe me, if he didn't know it, they're letting him know it from the sidelines. 34.1 seconds to play here in the first quarter. Rain's coming down a little heavier now. Rockledge facing second and three. And that wishbone right there in your room. Hawkins turns, gives. Nice cut inside, first down, just outside the 10. If he marks it at the 10, you almost want this marked at the 11. Because if it's at the 10, it's first and goal, and that's exactly where it is. So it's first and goal from the 10. So instead of a potential eight plays you get from the 10 or a 10 and a half, now it's four. You almost, like I say, want that ball marked outside of that 10 area, but not the case here. Rockledge driving following two, three great defensive possessions, and wouldn't you know it, we're going to have to watch their potentially score on the other end of the field here. So we'll flip sides. We'll be back with the start of quarter number two here on the Brevard Sports Network. And the good Lord has blessed us. The good field position Lord has blessed us. They aren't switching sides. And uh, thank you. Thank you. So it's first and goal to go from the 10. Referee blows the whistle. Hawkins under center, turns, gives, goodness. And he manages to get his way, find his way back to he being Peoples finds his way back to the line of scrimmage, and it'll be second and goal to go from the 10-yard line. Coming up at halftime, absolutely nothing. We're going to take a break. If, if the dance team dance, we'll show that. Yeah, if the dance team dances, we'll show that. But we can't we can't play the music, though, otherwise Facebook will cut us down. So second and goal to go from the 10. Hawkins, the wishbone behind him, gives to Peoples. And he is stacked up, and he's going to be stacked up. About the only way to put that. So third down and goal. No doubt four down territory. Don't know if they got a kicker. At 14U here. A lot of, a lot of 14U teams do. You got to find one. There ain't no doubt about that. Number 77 there on your screen for Rockledge. Big young man. Here's Kamari Young. 
And again, the wishbone balls out on the ground, falls on it, fourth and goal. Wet ball, bad snap, fourth and goal. You fight as a coach in games like this to keep the driest ball possible on the field. Saw it all night last night in horrendous weather conditions throughout the county last night. Many of the games an hour to 90 minutes late getting started. We'll go over some of those scores coming up here when we get a little break in the action. One game today, Rockledge already with a win in the books against Gulliver Prep. 7.55 to play in the first half. No score. This is exactly what we thought it would be. The game of the day, fourth and goal. Hawkins turns, nowhere to throw. He's going to run it. He's going to get in if he can get there. Up, uh, great, great pursuit. Just great pursuit by the defense. And the one thing that that maybe you want to coach, maybe maybe you need to coach up there a little bit. Is he, if he could stop, he had that cutback there available to get into the end zone. But again. It's a coachable moment, and he'll learn from that. Tony Brown and Mel Mitchell show him, and that's exactly what Tony Brown's telling him right now. He's telling him, you got to make that cut. A lot of times, that pylon is what makes your eyes as big, and it's there. You see it, and you don't see the defenders chasing you, and, and the belief is you can get there. But with speed like Harlem possesses, they close east and west quickly, as you saw there. But... The good news is, is that the Rockledge defense continues to push Harlem backwards, and in doing so, uh, now have an opportunity to really push them backwards as Harlem takes over first and 98 from their own two. And they're going to run it out straight up the gut. Oh, my goodness gracious. You can hear that from here. As Elijah Floyd got in there and said, nope, you're not going anywhere. Boy, the future of Brevard County defense is in really good hands, isn't it? Play action. He didn't put it in a quarterback or a running back's belly, but guess what? He gets outside and picks up more than enough for a first down. So a good run by the quarterback for Harlem over there. Coach Vick out there coaching some defense, and a player loses his helmet, and he's got to come off. So it's first and 10 now from the 10, or check that, from the 15. Six thirty-three to play in the first half. Nobody in the backfield. Quick little bubble screen to the slot receiver goes behind him, and that'll bring up second and ten. Saw that a lot last night from Jones against Coco. Who, man, that was a tale of two halves last night, was it not? Coco looked really, really good. Looked like Jones forgot to get off the bus, and then they did get off the bus in the second half. Slow and methodical, but it worked. Second and 10 from the 15. Quarterback keeps it again, makes a quick decision. Great cutback. Another great cutback. Picks up eight. Third and two coming up. Third and three. Coach Vick asking, what are we in? We need two backs in the box. And politely tells one of his players to get in the box. Third and actually call it five now for Harlem. Don't know that we'll see another punt if they don't make this after the last one. Whistle. And we're going to get... Dead ball, false start. So it'll be third and 10, right back to where they started. Or 
picked up the first down. Third down and 10 now for Harlem. They've been running empty sets here. Have not seen a running back except for on the first play of this series. We got one now. One deep. Rockland's playing one deep right now. Seven, eight, nine in the box. Steps up, throws in and out of the hands of the receiver. That's a good pass. Receiver should have caught that. Fourth and 10 coming up. So I don't know if the quarterback can't throw a wet ball, but he was throwing it earlier down the field. The downfield passing game has just been non-existent since he threw a couple of deep bombs early, maybe perhaps testing a speedy Raider secondary that wasn't budging. And they're going to try a punt. This ought to be interesting. 5.02 to go. Actually, most notably, he hasn't thrown a deep pass since he threw the interception. Yeah, that's true. Well, he didn't throw an interception, did he? Or no, the, 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 the near interception. The near interception. Snap, and there's a just, oh my, caught as Rockledge will now take over. Once again, inside the red zone, and here's the thing. You, you eventually, you're going to need to cash in on this field position because you can't let a team like Harlem hang around. With them having a, one big play capability, both of these teams have that, and that's what, I, and that's right, and and that's exactly what I'm saying. It only takes one play, with the speed that these two teams have, so Rockledge has got to cash in on these great field position opportunities because the tide eventually turns in a game like this, and it, and then it becomes Harlem with the field position like this. Guarantee you almost see it. Hawkins under center, the wishbone formation. My. <laughs> nowhere to run, nowhere to hide that time for Darius Phillips. That'll be a loss of three. Second and 13, 430 to play here in the first half. And again, a ball comes out, but it was down. And again, right now, taking the brunt of this front seven is Phillips. He carries again. This time picks up a hard, and I do mean a hard two yards. All right, so 350 to go. Winners last night include congratulations to John Holmes of Rockledge and Titusville. Rock John still coaches Rockledge youth football here. And last night picked up his first win. His first high school career win, his Terriers with a 48 to nothing win over um, Cocoa Beach last night, Josiah Allen and company. Uh, tell you what, it would be a mistake for anybody to walk in to play that team this year to underestimate them. With the athletes and the defense that they play, Hawkins is going to throw, rolls, throws, caught, down, incomplete, fourth down and 10. Here on the 7v7 Elite, the youth game of the week. Carla Brown, I think what we're going to do if the rain don't slow down, this is probably easier for you to call the third quarter, see if it slows down by the fourth, because we can encompass everything under one umbrella. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm standing out here with a headset on, soaking a $250 headset. Fourth and ten. I thought for sure by now it would have let up. Timeout on the field by Coach Mel Mitchell. And Tony Brown going to have a chit-chat with his offense. And we'll show it.
This is, I thought this game would go one of two ways. Exactly this way or a high-scoring game with a lot of big plays. Now, we still could have that in the second half. But, so far, it's all defense, defense, defense. And what it feels like to me is either team right now seems tentative to try to really test the other. So fourth and 10 from the 20. Hawkins lets it go. Ball is up and knocked down. That's all you got to do there. And you don't want to catch that there. Because again, if he gets tackled, it's first and 10 at the one. And I'm sure that's what the DC told his players. Don't catch that ball at the one or two unless you got a clear path to the end zone. And then even then you better make sure you got a clear path to the end zone. As the clock continues to run for some reason. Now it stops. 2.57 to play, first half. Harlem takes over. Let's see if the Wolves can make any progress down the field here. One back in the backfield. Four wide receivers. He's going to let this go deep down the field and nearly picked off again on the far side of the field. Hard fall over there once again for the DB. Give me this for a quick second. Watch out. Second and 10. Whistle blows, 2.46 to play. The incomplete pass stopped the clock. Quarterback gives to the only back in the backfield. Rockledge eats it up. And coming out of there with a big tackle is Xavion Peoples. And we got a flag, and that's gonna be taunting. It's gonna be 15 yards against the Raiders. Actually, they're gonna call it on both teams, offsetting. That's on Elijah Floyd for Rockledge, unsportsmanlike. I guess he got One thirty-seven to play. Third and 10. They've punted every time they haven't converted this in this field position, and I'm not sure why. Throws nearly picked off. I'm not sure why he tackled that guy, but he did. <laughs> so the incomplete pass will stop the clock with 128, and Rockledge will get the ball back here at the very least on the 20. They don't punt, and they try to run another play. Yep, and Rockledge will take over first and 10 at the 21 yard line. And one more time the Raiders take over with outstanding, and I do mean outstanding field position. Here, rest your arm for a minute.
You don't have anything in that backpack that's expensive, do you? Uh, no. All right. Okay. Whistles. And a false start coming. Left side of the offensive line moved. So it'll be first and 15 from the 25. One twenty-two to go in the first half. Nice little counter play there, but took a little too long to develop and Harlem closes the gap quickly and it'll be second in about 14. Great defensive battle going on here. Got a lot of new offensive linemen coming in here, so apparently the coach wants to try something here. 45 seconds to play. Could be the final play of the first half if Rockless doesn't take a timeout. A little slow getting to the line here. They got to hurry. Looks like a passing play coming up. Hawkins from the gun. Blitz catches him on a trap up the middle. Ball's out, but he's down. And now we'll get a timeout with 23.1 seconds to play. In the first half here, so let's see what the Raiders draw up for what should be the final play. Hold that. No, no more timeouts. Hey, Raph, how many timeouts, none? I don't imagine. I don't imagine that uh, Harlem's going to stop the clock here. So Rockledge, down to their final play of the half. They got to make it work, unless it's an incomplete pass. That's a good call. That trap play there just took a split second too long to develop. Was that lightning or a camera? I was going to ask you the same thing. Well, I'm hoping it was a camera. Because it was awfully close. I didn't hear any thunder, so I'm thinking it's a camera. Third down in about seven, but that's irrelevant here with 23 seconds to play in the first half. And they are going to try a pass, a little screen pass. Nice job. Sniffed out. He's got to get out of bounds. He does not as that'll take us to the end of the first half with your score, no score, between Harlem and Rockledge. We'll be back with the second half in about 10 minutes here on Brevard Sports Network.
All right, we are back for third quarter action right here on the Brevard Sports Network. Harlem Wolves and the Rockledge Raiders, 14U. Rockledge unable to, the, the big story of the first half is Rockledge had three possessions inside the red zone and could not put the ball in into score. You know, that, that, it's something to keep in mind here as you come into the second half because the three prime prime opportunities to pick up points. I don't care what age group of football you're in. You get the ball in the red zone. There's got to be points on the board. But I, I also got faith in Coach Mel Mitchell, Tony Brown, David Love, Victory Brown, Marcus Fielder, David McMillan. I got faith they went in there and made the corrections they needed to make. So Rockledge will kick off to Harlem and Harlem out of Cluiston. We, <laughs> we, uh, we got coaches, we got players. The only thing we're missing is uh, we're missing some referees. Number 22 set to do the kicking duties for Rockledge. Darius Phillips set to do the kicking duties. We still don't have referees out on the field. And the referees are just now entering the field of play. And the refs are now discussing something. All right, so Darius Phillips, the refs have finally come out and we are ready to go. Okay, coach. And second half is underway. That return caught, making his way upfield, and uh, great job on the kickoff coverage by the Raiders. Uh, 
I believe it's first and 10 from inside the 20. We'll get to see this Rockledge defense. And let's see what adjustments the Wolves have made. That ball's on the ground, and Rockledge says they have it, and they come up from the pile with a turnover. So Rockledge starting with another great set of field position. Did they make the adjustments needed to put this ball in the end zone? Great start again by that Raiders defense causing that turnover. And so, folks, I'm going to try to zoom in as much as I can. Quarterback going to take it on his own. Makes a man miss, and finally shoved out of bounds. But not before picking up eight or nine yards on the play. Now second and eight. They are inside the 7v7 Elite Red Zone. We'd like to thank 7v7 Elite for sponsoring the Youth Football Game of the Week. Raiders bringing a man in motion. Hands it off. And I believe they will pick up. They pick up. Four yards on the play. That'll be first down for Rockledge. So the re there's a stoppage in play. As they are ask, they're asking someone to get off the sideline. And uh, apparently someone's gotten kicked off the chain crew. First and goal, ball on the ground. Covered by Rockledge, Darius Phillips on the recovery. So it's now second and goal for Rockledge. Waters gives it off, and he is, 
Running back is into the end zone. Touchdown, Raiders. Noah Connor the third with the touchdown. So the Raiders made the necessary adjustments and have put the ball in the end zone. Quarterback under center. Fullback given on the handoff. Extra point is no good. But the important part is the Raiders have gotten on the board with the score of 6 to nothing, with 7.29 left to go here in quarter number three. What did I say, folks? I, I said I had faith that Coach Mitchell and that coaching staff, Coach Tony Brown, Coach David Love, made the necessary adjustments. And there you can see, yes, they did. And this Rockledge team has if they they had swagger before, they got they got more swagger now. Six nothing. Seven twenty nine left to go here in the third quarter. Darius Phillips. Set to set to do the kicking duties. They're switching out the tees. All right, here we go. And the kick by Phillips bounces. And could not tell you what happened. And a flag has been thrown on, I believe that's going to go against Harlem. A, a, a player took his helmet off. I believe that's a 15-yard personal foul penalty. There was a Harlem player who was not happy and before he left the field took his helmet off. Dead ball. Personal foul. And yes, it is. A personal foul against Harlem. The player took his helmet off in frustration. Can't do that while you're still on the field.
Raiders go on defense. But that 15-yard penalty is crucial. That is... Be, 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 because the dead ball happened on the kickoff. The, 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 after the play, the player got up and took his helmet off before going off the field. No. And whistles will blow that play dead. Wait for the call from the white hat. Encroachment on the Raiders. That'll move it up five yards. So it's now first and five for the Wolves. Quarterback drops back. He's going to fire over the middle. Fired before he was ready. And that pass will fall incomplete. Second and five. On about the 20, 19 or 20 yard line. Second and five, quarterback takes, takes it on his own, slips in the backfield. He'll lose another four yards on the play. And it'll be marked down by number 22, Darius Phillips. Getting back there. And it's now third and 12 for the Wolves. So third and 12 for the Wolves. Can this Rockledge defense hold him? And he will be brought down almost immediately. He will lose two yards on the play. He'll lose more than that. They were looking for a swing pass, and that swing pass ended up costing him About six yards on the play. So now it's fourth in the city of Rockledge. And <clears throat> sorry for the voice sorry for the voice crack there. Don't exactly know what's going on here. Oh, there was a there was a player down. And so the Rockledge coaches are coming on out to use it as a quick timeout. So fourth in the city of Rockledge for the Wolves. They are inside the 10 yard line. Oh, bad snap. Who recovers it? It's, it's in the end zone. It's either a safety or a touchdown.
And it's a safety. A safety by the Raiders on the mishandled punt. And the score is now eight to nothing. Rockledge on top. And they get the ball back. And there is an there is an injured player on the field. Player is up and walking off under his own power. Wait a minute. Wait. The So the Harlem Wolves coach is giving directions to his team. I was wondering what this long pause was. And either way, this should result in some great field position for Rockledge. Back deep here for the Raiders is number 14, Jaden Williams. Cannot see who, who that other young man is on the other side, but Jaden Williams is the young, young man in your screen at the moment. And so they were they were searching for the kicking tee. 4:13 left to go here in the third quarter. And that ball is kicked and Jaden Williams will uh, will pick it up. Makes one man miss. Tries to slip out of another tackle will be eventually brought down at about the 46 47 yard line where it's first and 10 for the Rockledge Raiders. Mario Quindo Waters and a timeout called by the Wolves and their coach is not happy.
as the Raider, Coach Tony in there talk, talking to the offense. Three fifty-seven left to go here in quarter number three. Rockledge up eight to zero, as you see up there on the seven v seven elite scoreboard. We'd like to thank seven v seven elite Lee Latner for sponsoring the youth football game of the week right here on the Brevard Sports Network. Quindo Waters under center. He's going to hand it off, and he is gone. The 20, the 10. Touchdown, Rockledge on the handoff. Mr. Peoples took it to the house. And it's 14-0, Rockledge. I planned on it. Peoples took it. He put one foot in the ground and then got gone. That hole created by the offensive line, I think Allen could have gotten to the end zone through there. Hip and all. Zoom in as much as we can here, people. 14 0 with 3.36 left to go here in quarter number three. Once again, one of those bad snaps on a punt attempt. Quarterback under center. Giving it to the first back through, and I believe he'll be stopped short. <laughs> the only we're in in Brevard County, and it's, and it's right here. The, the heaviest rain in the county is taking place right here. Now Darius Phillips set to do the kicking duties for the Raiders. Go ahead and while they're getting lined up, go ahead and change the scoreboard here. It says 14 nothing Rockledge. Yeah. <laughs> As Alan said, that's a uh, that's a long travel. Come all this way to get beat. This has been the day of Rockledge. I mean, the the, the high school started off the day. Phillips. That's uh, that came off the side of his foot. And uh, yeah, number fourteen. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he got sandwiched. <laughs> I almost call that the the the, the double clocking because he got clocked on the hit, and then that ground is not forgiving either. I don't care how wet it is. <laughs> so 
So here comes that Raiders defense. Had a chance at halftime to have a conversation with uh, one Tyrone Jifscom, and uh, he said, yes, we made Gulliver Prep look like they did. <laughs> I mean, I mean, when, when you can take a team from down south and uh, post up a goose, goose egg on them, you're a... Uh, Prep should have went to the Final Four last year. Right, and Gulliver Prep... They had Cardinal Gibbons down by 21 points in the regional finals and lost. That, th and they returned, they lose their quarterback, but they return a lot of great players. Rockers beat a team that will return to the Metro playoffs. <laughs> and uh, we're waiting for play to get started. There is conversation with a coach. On, we'll, we'll show you what the delay is here. All right, I think we're ready to get the snap off finally. That's a high snap. Quarterback survey makes a man miss, and he's got some open daylight. But that Rockledge speed said, uh, "Not too, not too fast now." How you doing, Coach? Coach, uh, Coach Goins. You know, uh, quarterback cut right of the middle is going to try to cut outside, slips out of one tackle, and that closing speed by Rockledge. This, uh, Honestly, folks, this field has a special memory to me. This is uh, where I got part of my start. Doing film. Uh, Co Coach Goins re reached out to me and said, uh, hey, how would you feel about uh, filming youth football? And uh, I was looking for an excuse to get out of the house. I said, why not? And I, can sp I can tell you many a Saturdays I spent out here at Rockledge Youth football field. And the swing past the outside, and what a sandwich. Wow. And there is another injured uh, injured player. We don't show injuries here on the Brevard Sports Network. Well, the, the, the officials are now saying, uh, saying run it. So it's second and uh, second and nine. And that, that's a fumbled snap. And it looks like the Raiders may have recovered it. And the Wolves. The Wolves jump on that, but they're going to lose. Uh, 
they're going to lose some significant yardage. We just went from second and nine to now third. It's now third down, third down and a trip to Vero Beach. Ball's thrown up. Nearly. Number one there nearly had the reception. Right here in your living room. Three point two seconds left to go here in the third quarter. And it's still fourth and a trip to Vero Beach. And uh, the punter th with an throw makes a man miss. You know what? What an effort. He said, Yeah, that was fourth down. Now, That's, you know, you know, and that's the thing. I admire the effort by the young man. He, he one more broken tackle. I think he has the first down there. Cl Cluiston Bell Glade area. So the Raiders will take over on offense just outside plus territory. Be about the 43 yard line. Here we go, here come the Raiders on offense. Gonzalez. Gonzalez under center. Gonzalez hands off to Phillips, and that'll be a false start. All right, so it's uh, first and 15. Gonzalez hands the first back through, first back through, powering through that hole. Amari Quindo Waters on the carry. Be gain of seven yards on the play. 
Now making it second and nine. Gonzalez under center, second and eight here for the Raiders in plus territory. Going to give it to Phillips. Phillips breaks a couple tackles. And uh, picked up off the ground by multiple Wolves and taken to the ground. But not before picking up a gain of about three yards. Gonzalez, third and six. And uh, that's a uh, false start on everyone but the center. So it's now third and eight. Gonzalez under center, three backs in the backfield. And wow. Wow, what a play there made by number five. Number five got in the backfield and said, uh, you will sit right here. So it's now fourth and 13 for the Raiders. So fourth and long for the first time for Rockledge today. 6.50 left to go in the game. Handoff and that'll be a nice game there for the Raiders. But it will be short of a first down, and the Wolves will take over. Raiders have 14 to nothing score, as you can see up on the 7v7 Elite scoreboard. And that, uh, that's another fumbled snap. Quarterback is down, and that'll be a loss of about five or six yards on the play. <laughs> Trying 
Dropping back. Quarterback now is going to take it on his own. Look, Looking for a receiver, buying all the time in the world. Now he just tucks it under, and he's going to take it himself. Well, uh, he ran... He ran 20 yards, probably picked up three or four. And a penalty on uh, the Harlem Wolves. Five and a half minutes left to go here in the game. Quarterback, get out of the gun. He, oh, oh my gosh. Number 15, Cedric Wiley, almost had himself a pick. Third and long. Quarterback on the on the bubble and uh, number seventeen, Drew S Sarver said, uh, "You get no more yards. You go you go down right here." Four minutes left to go in the game. Penalty, penalties on both sides offsetting. So fourth down. And that's a fumbled snap, and Rockledge will take over first and ten. Just outside the 20-yard line, I believe it'll be the 24-25 yard line with three minutes and 42 seconds left. No.
Three and a half minutes left to go here in the game. Gonzalez. Michael Gonzalez. Under center. And that is, that's as offside as if I've ever seen it. Good job by Gonzalez to just let him jump across the line. That'll be a free five yards. No. So it's now first and five. Inside the 20. Believe I'm, believe that's the the 18 or 19 yard line. Gonzalez gives to the first back, and uh, he will go absolutely nowhere. Might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. But the important thing for Rockledge here is they're just milking this clock. Up two scores. And look, if you know anything about this coaching staff, they would love nothing more than to see that zero Kept up, kept up posted on that board. Mel, Mel Mitchell, Tony Brown, Coach Vic. <laughs> following in, following in, uh, Coach, Coach Tyrone Jiscom's defense. Coach Tyrone Jiscom, legendary coach Pat Lusk. And a timeout being called by Harlem. I believe that's that's number two, that's either number two or number three. Because they had won the second play of halftime, they had to call a timeout. Because the coach was trying to communicate the plays to his players. And no one was paying attention. So uh, I, I, I foresee a lot of running. But that. Well, this is called. You can take this one or two ways. This could be a wake up call. Or this could be the start of a downward spiral. Coaching determines that. Uh, if you didn't hear Alan, he said uh, this game can this can be looked at as one of two ways, either a wake up call to everybody, or the start of the downward spiral, and the coaching will determine which which way you end up looking at this. No, which direction? Or, it goes. Which direction it, it goes? So third and about five. Gonzalez. Snaps the football. And that's Darius Phillips. Phillips just short of, uh, uh, of the goal line, but that is first down and that that's the game. Because that's now first and goal with a minute, just over a minute and a half left to go in the game. The uh, That Rockledge defense will be your 7v7 elite players of the game. Gonzalez uh, hopping off, try, needs to get his, uh, his cleat on. Somebody. 
and that clock continues to run f just over 40 seconds. I think they've got to take, they'll have to take one more snap. They're going to take one more snap, and that will be the game. Again, the Rockledge defense, your 7v7 elite players of the game. Again, I'd like to thank 7v7 Elite for their sponsorship of this broadcast, the BSN Youth Football Game of the Week. And uh, the coaching staff just took the uh, delay a game penalty. They, they snap it one more time. Thank you to Lee Latner and 7v7 Elite for your partnership and being a sponsor of the BSN Youth Football Game of the Week. Gonzalez to take the final snap and gives it to Darius Phillips. And Phillips said he's trying to get in the end zone one last time. And that's the game, folks. Rockledge scores 14 second-half points to take the 14 to nothing victory. Great job again. The Rockledge defense are your 7v7 elite players of the game. For Alan Slaughterzinski, Rockledge Youth Football President, Miss President Shatina Brown. All the coaching staff, the vice president, uh, Mr. Alex Goins. I'm Kayla Brown. Again, your final score, the Rockledge Raiders, 14. Harlem Wolves, zero. Have a great night, everybody. And as always, make it a sports night.